Winsor and Newton, History of Watercolor Industry Leader. Before I bought my first box of watercolors, I searched on the internet watercolor recommendations for novice, and most of the advice I got was to buy Winsor and Newton's pens. So how did Winsor and Newton come to own the reputation it has now, and make so many people who have used it are willing to recommend it to newcomers as a representative of watercolor pens? Let's rewind to 18th century Britain. At that time, painting was a hobby just for the aristocracy, and the spare time of the common people was still limited to activities that did not cost much, such as singing and dancing. In those days, professional painters had to experience a very complex preparation process for each painting. They needed to either green from the ore, or take the pressed and dried watercolors and rub them difficultly to get the color. They even had to use the needle to puncture the pig's bladder to squeeze out the oil paint for painting. Painters were already exhausted from the preparatory steps of painting. In 1776, a businessman called William Reeves spotted this business opportunity. He added some honey to the dried pigments, turning them into the semi-dry state that can be used with water and was easy to carry. In a sense, this was the world's first commercially available solid watercolor paint. Reeves made a very large sum of money selling paints exclusively to painters. In partnership with his brother Thomas Reeves, he established a watercolor brand, naming it with their surname Reeves, and designing a dog as a brand's logo. This branding initiative was so successful that even the British royal family granted them a royal designation. License, but at a time when the Reeves brand was growing rapidly, the Reeves brother broke up and split into two businesses. More than half a century later, in 1832, a small company was founded at 38 Brasbourne Place, London. The founders were the artist Henry Newton and scientist William Winsor, whose names are combined to become Winsor and Newton. In 1835, Winsor and Newton developed the first. Glycerin-based moist watercolors, changing the history of outdoor paintings. This watercolor was several times moister than the honey-based block watercolors, and was much easier to pick up. This watercolor was basically the prototype of the block watercolor used today. In 1837, they introduced China White, an extremely opaque zinc white from Tibet, China. It was a great invention for the painters of the time. Who had a chronic shortage of durable, opaque white? The white pigment was so well received on the market that people scrambled to buy it, and the carriage often blocked on the road where Winsor and Newton's was located. During the reign of Queen Victoria in 1841, the royal warrant originally held by Reeves flowed to Winsor and Newton. After this, Winsor and Newton continued to develop new technologies and expand their product range. For example, in 1842, they introduced the detachable screw-up paste tube packaging, and in 1866, they created a custom-made series seven brush for Queen Victoria. Until now, although Winsor and Newton products have become very sophisticated. They still develop several new colors each year, including mineral colors and environmental-friendly pigments without hazardous chemical. Reeves has been on a different path since the split. They withdrew from the specialist paint sector and gradually took over the beginner and children's paint market with a low-price strategy. And they eventually acquired by the Rickett and Coleman in 1970s. In 2017, Reeves changed its packaging to a brand new one, focusing on the youth market with great designers and really nice-looking packaging. However, it is not very successful in terms of the figures. As one of the first commercial watercolor brands to emerge, Reeves disintegrated at the time when it has a huge advantage, giving Winsor and Newton the space to survive. And with the new turn, phenomenal speed of development ensured its unassailable dominance within the watercolor industry. 
and it was reefs that completely lose its ability to compete with Winston and Newton. This shows that constant innovation is a key point of companies in emerging industry to maintain their leading position.